Hello and welcome to the Switch Underground. My name is Danny. Today we are back with some more Kingdoms of Amalur here on the old Nintendo Switch. The screen is up here above my eyeballs. It's still in a not cool position, but our quest today is a faction one. Uh, we did some vault stuff that I can't remember because it's been three months. We'll talk about that at some point. But um, lock and key. So we need to go visit the locksmith in Tarion, and hopefully he will sort all of this out. Um, I hope everybody's having a fantastic day today. If it's morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever you are, I hope it is a fantastic one. Can we warp here? That would be awesome. Yes, I can. So we'll go see this locksmith guy, figure out what the heck he's talking about. Because apparently the vault that we uh, liberated last time uh, had a key in it that was potentially a copy of the real key. And the only person who could probably do that, or knows who could do it, is this locksmith. So, we're going to do that. Hope everybody had a great Christmas, New Year's, all that stuff. Holidays are an excellent time of year. Everybody's vibe is just usually a positive one and I love that can I zoom in here local map please where is the boy why does it want me to go outside is he outside did I miss something I don't know man it's been a long time since I've been in front of a camera but it's kind of like riding a bike it's just comes back to you man and it's just easy but, to avoid any funky lulls in our conversation, I have the, um, the kid talk cards today. These are our subjects that are for talking about with your children. Usually they're a little cheeky, a little fun, very polarizing ones, like what is your favorite X thing here. But first, this locksmith. What I don't understand is why it's telling me to go inside when I was just there. Well, what is this? Oh, maybe I'm supposed to be here. Oh, and I haven't even been there yet. Uh, it looks like we are, oh, I can go right there. The glom thicket. Then we'll just shoot straight up north, see what the heck the locksmith wants. Today's kid question is, oh wait. What is your favorite stuffed animal and what did you like about it? When I think about my favorite stuffy, as some people have called it in the past. And while I figure out how to sprint, there we go. You know what? Let's just let's just get some let's get some attacks in here. Oh wow! So I swapped. There's a couple couple things we gotta address here. I swapped my secondary weapon for these like chakra things. Chakra things. That is way better than the bow. Holy cow, I was an idiot for using the bow that long. Come on, dude, what you gonna do? Okay. And it's done. You also gotta remember to block. Take everything. You'll also notice that I have a new sword. I just crafted this. I thought maybe, you know what? This time, instead of like going into the game and spending the first X amount of time talking about how I can't remember how to play, I'm just gonna take two seconds. And what I found out is that I had salvaged enough materials to make this sword. It's called the Shrek Donger. Now, if you remember, I had I had the dong, the bigger dong, the biggest dong, all the swords that I had made. But this one is green, so I just called it uh, Shrek. And, I mean, that's, that's really all there is to it. But it does a lot more damage. Let's see how it does with this thing. Oh, wow. He's a, he's a bad boy. I'm gonna need to use a potion. Do it, man! Oh yeah, I forgot I have this new ability. Where I can, like, attack from behind my shield. Okay, well, I mean, that was... unnecessary. An evil war priest. Okay. And his two little turds. Oh wow, he just ran away. 
Do it, man. Come on. Okay. He's resisting me. Dude, this guy better drop something on me. I'm committed now. I'm committed to, to dying. So, this... This sword... Does a lot more damage, but... It also... Does not have that stun like we had in the last one. So the last sword looked, looked super cool. Had a great stun effect. This one, a little different. It, um... Gets us back to just burning shit all the time. Stuff all the time. You gotta be careful now. You're not supposed to say the bad words anymore. So we're going to uh, make sure our language is clean. And pure. And uh, we don't say anything that's going to get us in trouble. First of all, how the heck... How do we get up here? Well, just this way, of course. Are we even going the right way? Is the question. Yes, we are. That's good. That is good. So, uh, first test run of the Shrek Donger. I like it, dude. It burns stuff. It's just awesome. I just was running towards that. Crab. Oh, wow. You're a big boy. You're nice. You're nice. Wow, look at this. Look at this cow, dude. Whew. He is a thick one. Oh, there's even side quests up here. So I've never been to this town. This is new. Remember, we are, like, inside a new region now. Hi. Please, can't you help? I mean, possibly. I need someone to travel to the Tawilly coast. It's my daughter. What's the trouble, my friend? Oh, right. Anala led a group of refugees to the town of Kuln. I warned her not to go, but she's always been a strong-willed girl. I should have from her by now, and the caravanners say that bands of Tuatha have landed on the coast. If anything happened to Anella, I don't know what I'd do. Please. Freaking Tuatha, okay. man. They're just such a pain in the ass all the time. Pay me first. 95% success? Oh, it seems I have no choice. If you're willing to go, I'll we're give going, you uh, We're going Witcher style here. You I'll do it. At last. Anella led the refugees to the ruins of Kuln. If she's yep. hurt, bring her back safely. The ruins lie south of Rathia and the old battleground. If there's trouble, the settlers may... Got it. Yep, yeah, I'm sure I will get on that, you know, after I do a bunch of this stuff. We're focused on the locksmith, man. I was playing some Skyrim a bit ago. Oh my god, why do I- why am I getting all this stuff? Did that guy just give me all that stuff? Woo! The lab. I feel like I'm gonna walk in here and just get annihilated. Okay, everybody be cool. This doesn't look sus or anything, everything's trashed. We know you're in here. Somewhere. You! It's the turdy mages! Oh, I see. Bruh. You don't really want to do this, friend. Do you? I will use my... My thingies. Ow. Hello? Is somebody there? Would you like hide yourself, friend? Oh, hey. I see I have you to thank. You and my clever hiding place. Yes, Tefroy. Imagine what those churls were after. They kept barking on about the war sworn this and kill me that. No. But now tell me, what can I do to repay you? A brief lesson in the art of locks, perhaps? Please, give it to me. Actually, what kind of training can I get? Oh, basic trainers can only offer their expertise with a custom skill. What level am I now? It says, current, wait, okay. I guess we just do it, right? Am I just 
A rigorous training has yielded a permanent increase to your lockpicking skill. My thanks for dispatching those intruders. Can I do it again? Yeah, let's just spend all this money. Uh, all training complete. Oh crap, okay. Can you tell me about this fake what? ass key? Or fake you butt it key? Work? Uh, this is one of my greatest achievements. I recreated that ancient marvel perfectly. I promised that pledge shield. Uh, Fenin. Fenin, that was her name. I should know I, that name. I, I don't remember it though. Surely she had permission, yes? She swore to me. Oh wait, yeah, oh. don't I have somebody locked up? I see. For Pledge Shield Fennin, yes. Uh-huh. Now, if you will see yourself out, I have a mess to clean up. So now we know. Now we know who it was. Wasn't that the lady that was like, I was helping her do stuff, and then she was like, oh, it wasn't me, or some such nonsense? Just gonna casually loot this thing. What is this? That is a mighty fine upgrade to my legs. Give it all to me, please. Let's just put those on real quick. They're probably not going to look cool, which means we're not going to look cool anymore. But it is what it is, man. Sometimes we gotta make sacrifices. God, look at all this stuff. We're not even getting any of the bonuses anyway, so... It's fine. Now we just look like a garden variety turd. But we do have our Shrek Dong, which is lovely and green. Favorite stuffed animal and what did I like about it? Back to business. So, I'm old, obviously. And the very first animal that I think of when I think of this question is an old stuffed animal I used to have. It was called a popple. Now, popples were these, like, creatures that kind of look like bears, kind of not. But you could, like, fold them into, like, little balls. They would, like, fold in on themselves. So you had this little, like, stuffed ball with a tail. And each one had, like, a little, like, function. So I had this really cool one that had a plastic nose that was transparent and had a little basketball thing in it. So you could squeeze his belly and he would like shoot air like through the little thing and like inside the basketball game. You could try to make shots inside his nose. He was orange and like blue, I think it was. So it was awesome. And I freaking loved that thing. Popple. That and I also remember having like a like a Hulk Hogan, like they used to make these wrestling dolls that you could like beat up. And I had a Hulk Hogan one, and that was sweet too. I do recommend the Popples and the wrestling uh, stuffed people. That reminds me of like Stretch Armstrong too. Do you guys remember Stretch Armstrong? It was like one of these first toys where you could like stretch him forever and he wouldn't break. Of course, you could chop him open and there was like a bunch of goo inside, but like he was like super rubbery and like. It was just cool. I liked it. So where... Who am I talking to here? The boss man? Let's see. Map. Local. Alright, so I want to be over here. So there must be some stairs. That door does not open. Use your brain. The brain. I know it's been a while. We can do this. All right, here we go. Not a stain anywhere. Do you understand? Welcome to Helmgard. Who do I want to talk to here? The locksmith pledge shield Fenin, you say? Mm -hmm. Stole my key, had it copied, handed it to the enemy. We must confront her at once. Oh boy, this is not going to go well. Henry, seize her. Tell me I did not just get a sword that's way better than the one I just made. I will be so in the cells happy now. pissed about it. Go see if she'll talk. We've got to get to the bottom of this. We will do that. Yes, yes indeed. The duty's yours. I Why think am I questioning her, dude? Alright. I'm assuming it's this way. I mean, everybody went this way. 
Why wouldn't you send me on a weird dungeon-y run here? Okay, we gotta go that way and then down. Okay. Popples, dude. I like remembering stuff like that. Wow, look at that armor. Oh yeah, sword. Check it. Oh man, it's named. I bet it looks cool. 104 though. Uh, it actually does not look that cool. Not as cool as Stormbrand, man. Or this boy. Or Fortune. It looks exactly like the Shrek dog. Just poisony. And not with a bunch of sweet stuff like lifesteal. Okay, I'm not upset. I'm not upset. It's fine. Alright, so let's see what she gotta say. There she is, right there. Oh, did I have a quest to get a wedding ring? The Saken Plains contract takes a particular sort to pull a ring out of a grave like that. I don't remember what that Here's was about. Pay. Wait, have you washed your hands? Wait, what? That I do. Any soul who's willing can take a contract. Oh, it was a contract. I'll see you paid. Right then. Thanks. Sure, I washed my hands. Didn't keep it on my hands though. I confess. I'm ready. Oh boy. I know I can never make amends for the deaths I've caused. But I will try. I stole the key and had it copied. Mm-hmm. I gave it to He swore he worked for the Alfar army. That this could end the war. A man named Elvin Merrock. I knew him from... That does not matter. He said he's a soldier in Tewilly. Though we always met pretty far south of the barracks. Near the way into the marsh. What in were you doing in the marsh? Said, the only place I've ever seen him is with his friends. Where Tewilly joins Akatha. Okay. So... Okay. I guess... Where is this guy? So they, they went and did the deed in the marsh. Is that what I'm understanding? That is not sanitary at all, friends. Given this turn of events, you are to find this Merok character. Extract from him what you can. Oh boy. This I have might require a little, uh... Meet her in Rathir when you're done. Follow the trail, Walsworn. Someone copied that key and stole who knows how many artifacts from our vault. Right. Go as far as you can to find them. And meet up with Gwyn and Rathir. Or the you got it. Help with the war. My gods. Okay. I guess we're gonna go uh, extract some information. Hopefully it's not gonna require some undercover vice operations. I have been saving probably some... Some more comfortable armor to wear for stuff like that. But, I don't know. So these kids' cards have two sides. Uh, the other side has another question. It says, if you had a warning label, what would it say? Oh my god, dude, I don't even know. Probably like, plays too well with others, might make you uncomfortable, you know. Relatively harmless, but just weird. Stuff like that. Nothing crazy. Alright, where am I going here? Oh, he's like... Wait, where am I? Oh, I'm here. And it looks like there is a path. Have I been here yet? Oh, wow, Rathir. That's like a giant city, dude. I've never been there. Okay, so we'll go back to the glom, glom thicket and then loop back around. Go up there, and then there's a big city. I really should look into buying a new house. My other house is, like, super far away now. I mean, but one thing about this game that's great is the fast travel is everywhere, which is awesome. But for now, we're back out in the wild. But yeah, warning label. We can pull another one. What do you do when your feelings get hurt? Do you withdraw, fight back, or do something else? That is a complicated question. 
because the it all depends on why my feelings were hurt. Did I set unreasonable expectations for myself or others? Did I get completely wronged by someone in an act of malice? Did I see a sad movie and now I must deal with whatever... Uh, tr oh, 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 hold on. Did I see a sad movie and I have to deal with whatever triggered that emotional distress? You know? Okay. Come on, man. Do it. Oh, wow, okay. One thing about these slow swords is they got tons of reach, but um, sometimes it takes a minute to actually get your shot in. Just keep that shield up, man. You'll be fine. You'll be fine. So it all depends on the context of what the feeling was hurt. Like, what, what triggered it, you know? Normally, when my feelings are hurt, I would say 9 times out of 10, it is because I set unreasonable expectations. And that is just in my nature, dude. I... I want to be... Um, I want to say perfect, but... I want to make sure I'm always putting my best foot forward in social situations, in my work. So there's a little perfectionism stuff going on, and when that doesn't, like, pan out, I get upset. And sometimes I will withdraw. Other times I will double down. And one of the skills that I've had to learn as I've gotten older is uh, doubling down on your weaknesses as well as your strengths is very important. Identifying what those are is the hardest part. And there is a wonderful book called Emotional Agility, which basically breaks down the time it takes, or the time frame. Hmm. The time frame between when the emotion was made and your when it was created and your reaction. So say someone says someone says something not nice to me. I'm just gonna beat these guys up so I can talk. Um Let's, let's say something simple. Say somebody called me fat. And I'm like, okay, cool. That's upsetting. Um, the, the very first thing I could do is just, you know, be sad about it. Angry at that person for lashing out. But with emotional agility, you are afforded a moment of pause should you train yourself to do so. So what happens is, boom, it happens. And then there's like a snapshot, a frame in your mind. You intercept the thought before it gets to your reactive part of your brain about how you're going to handle it. And um, that, sort of mastering that, and not always, not always, man. Depending on the severity of the emotion, it's very, very hard to afford yourself that moment of pause. But how you interpret it what can you learn from it? Analyzing where that feeling comes from and then determining an appropriate response is a learned skill. So back to our example of somebody calling me fat, I would be like, okay, this is a fact. Um, it upsets me because, not because the person said it, but because I gave them cause to do so by sort of, you know, not cause, that's not the right word. I sort of put myself in a position to open myself up to sort of be influenced by a statement like that, and there's a lot of shame there because I don't like being fat at all, and there are not many people who do, for health reasons, for just everything. If you know, you know, man. So part of it is like, somebody called out some shame, Ravager Scepter. Nice. That's a good nickname for my Scepter. So, there's that part, and then there's the other uh, empathic part, where it's like, that's obviously not normal behavior by a person who is of sound mind. So what emotional damage has this person endured that made them think it was okay to put me in that position? And that triggers the empathy 
uh, thing, which is way more healthy than a rage response. And it seems counterintuitive. Why does why do these people deserve our empathy? Everyone deserves our empathy. And that's just how I operate. I think it is far more there's far more to learn from analyzing why someone does something negative to you than there is in retribution. Every time. What's this here? A little soldier come wandering down the coast? They found the key, turd. Word to Mad Hast in the customs house. He and his will want to know. They always do. Dandra theory. I've said it before, and I will say it again. Learn the password. Okay. This game, when they made up the names, they just took a Scrabble, board, like bag of letters, and they're like, "Hey, we need a hero," and they threw it, and boom, that's where all the names came from. Oh, should I pull this out? An old sword of remarkable craftsmanship lies embedded in the stone. An ice and gem is clasped in its pommel, and frost webs the blade. The stone's grip is strong. It does not seem likely to let the sword go. Let's remove the gem. Try pulling the sword out. Oh my god. What, really? I just tried twice and boom? Is it a good sword? I wonder. It looks cool. Oh man. Now I'm fighting all these cool ass swords? The issue is I've spent so long doing side quests and stuff, I've out leveled almost all of the content that I'm doing right now. Which is fine. I like kind of like playing games like that where I can just kind of kind of coasty through it but uh, it makes finding weapons quite challenging what the heck are you come back here hey what are you the ghost of something should I fall is it gone should I follow it I'm following it hey oh you're you're a nasty one should I use my superpower, dude? No. Nobody survives the onslaught of the Shrek Dong. Nobody. We burn them down every time. And boy, does it feel good. See these crabs? Not interested. If I, if I hit them, they'd be cooked and we could just eat them right away, which would be great. What small town do you love and what do you like about it? I love all small towns. For a variety of reasons. Of which I've talked about on numerous occasions. The cafes. The everything. The people. However, we're at, um, we're about, a, we're about a half hour in, man. And I think this is a good stopping point. We're in a new town. We've got to find a password. We've got new questy things here that we're going to have to talk to this guy. But hey, I know that guy. Do I know this guy? I feel like I know this guy. Like he was part of a quest before. Boy, look at the revelry over here. Look at this dance. Yes. Let's um... Let us uh... Let's analyze these, these moves. Yeah. That's good stuff. The uh... The dexterity. The, uh, the clearly... Oh, I can talk to her. Okay. Oh, look at that guy. It's kind of rad. Anyway. We did it, man. We recorded something after, like, 60 billion years. Which is awesome, because that's what we do. Uh, going forward, I had several things I was going to do. Um, several things that I want to do. Uh, which we will talk about probably at the beginning of a video because, as we all know, making it to the end of videos is challenging for all of us. And my videos are designed to be your friend in the room. So if this is your first time here, thank you for showing up. Hopefully you stick around. Uh, hopefully I stick around. But, you know, I'm not one of those people that's like, these are all my excuses. It's like, you know what? Do what you can do. And that's that. 
So uh, be good to each other, and I will see you guys in the next one, which will probably be some Super Lucky's Tale. Or is it going to be Portal? God, I don't know. I'm playing like five games right now. But uh, we'll figure out what the next one is in the lineup, and we'll get after it. So uh, be good to each other, and I will see you guys in the next one. Take care.